Heyo, duckies! Andy Lip here, back with another advanced OBS tutorial, and today we're looking at something new that I've started using on my channel at twitch.tv slash andylippy, so come and check me out there and ask me any questions you've got about any of these tutorials I go through. This is the most minimalistic, minimalistic overlay, bloody hell, can't talk today, overlay that you'll ever be able to use. You don't need to know how to design, you don't need to Photoshop, you don't need paint. Do people still use paint? I don't know. It is actually all right. I used it recently. So yes, the answer is yes. But this is so simple to use. The best thing about it is if you want to crop your sources or change the size of your source, so you don't want a um, 16 by 9 webcam and you want a square webcam, for instance, the overlay will match without having to edit it or anything like that. It is all automatic. It's incredible. But before we get into it, make sure you do like this video and also subscribe because I do all kinds of different tutorials and everything. Twitch, streaming, OBS, anything. Just I do everything. So check it all out. Put your rock by the stone. Let's go. Right, so first things first, as always, this one is using a plugin that you can find on the OBS website. All these links are going to be down in the description below. But we want to be jumping into the OBS website and go for StreamFX. This has actually just been updated recently as well with a couple of new features. There's so many things that you can use inside of StreamFX, so get it downloaded if you want to just make your streams pop. There's so many cool effects that you can add. So we hit go to download, it's going to take us to the GitHub page, go right down to the bottom, they're constantly updating this plugin like I say. Choose whatever version you want, I want the Windows version. You can either use the installer or you can download the zip. I like to show you guys how to install plugins because it is something you might need to know because if you ever need to update plugins as well, this is the way that you can manually do it or find the, the files or anything like that. So I'm being told that it is kind of dangerous, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the downloads and tell it no. Stop it, man. Stop it. Look. Keep. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not dangerous, Windows. Sort yourself out. So we've got stream effects on Windows just here. We're going to open that up. You've got two folders in it. We're going to right-click, copy them, and we're going to go to your C drive. And then you're going to be looking in either Program Files or Program Files 86. I'm going to open up Program Files, and you're looking for OBS-Studio, all lowercase. So go in there, and then just right-click and press Paste. So it's going to ask you if you've already got this installed to replace the files. If not, it's going to ask for all the administration privileges and everything like that. Just say yes to everything. Make sure you don't have OBS open because you'll have to restart OBS to make, to make sure that it is installed correctly. I'm going to turn that off for now because I've got it all plugged in and ready to go. So once that's all installed, jump into OBS. You'll know it's installed correctly because a message will pop up kind of in the middle of the screen saying welcome to Stream Effects and give a shout out to all the people that helped create it, etc. And you'll also have this little menu at the top for Stream Effects. If that's not there, it means you've not installed it correctly or you might need to make sure that you've got all the redistributables for C++ and everything like that installed as well. You can just Google that and it will come up with all the files that you need. So I'm going to show you a couple of of methods to implement these outlines okay so I've got a couple of images just here they're both exactly the same this image is actually from one of my music videos that I do over at the Andy Stone channel this is my no time to die Billie Eilish cover so definitely go and check that out the link will be in the description all that jazz so we've got a image just here I use nested scenes a lot uh, so this is going to be my nested scene. So a nested scene is a scene within a scene, okay? I've got a, uh, a tutorial just on that. You can check that out just up here as well. So uh, this nested scene is basically just going to be this image. And then I can use that scene on a different scene as well. So that sounds a little bit complex. But what I'm going to do is right click on this scene just here and press filters. And then press the plus and then go to SDF effects. So in there, I'm just gonna call this outline for now. So in here, you'll get quite a few different effects that you can get. You've got the outer shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, outline, and some more advanced options. You don't really need to worry about the advanced options at all. But today, I'm gonna to be showing you the outlines. So as soon as I click that, you'll see this kind of black border has just started to appear just here. And I can change the color, so if I press select color, I'm going to do a bright yellow just so we can see it. And you can see now that source has got 
a outline you can use this on any source as well it doesn't have to be an image it you can be a video it can be a webcam it can be even a green screened webcam so you'll have your outline on there you can do literally anything okay guys so once that's done you can change the width of it as well so as you can see the higher i go the thicker it becomes just there you can also offset it a little bit so if you don't want it to cover the, actually on the inside you can see that now there's a blank space in between that and the uh, the image. I'm just going to leave them at zero for now so it's just on the image. Uh, I'm going to put the width at 10 just so we can see it. And you can change the sharpness as well. So you can kind of give it a glow effect if you have it on zero. And also like really, really stand out on 100 just there. And you obviously also got the alpha. So a good mix of the two. You can make that kind of just nice glowing effect. And as simple as that, you've got an overlay now. I absolutely love this feature and I'm implementing it into absolutely everything. It means I don't have to edit things at all because the best thing about it is if I close this down. Um, in fact, let me just make it a little bit sharper again. I've not put it on the image, Andy. Filters. I'm just going to put the, uh, the alpha on full and the outline on full as well. So if I start to resize this. The outline stays with it at all times. If I crop it by holding down Alt, the outline stays with it regardless. So if you ever, ever need to resize a source, you don't need to resize any of your uh, overlays or anything like that because it will go with it, which is in incredible. So I could just do that and that's it, my little overlay. And I love this little effect. So when you use this, say, Excel Draws Motion plugin, which I've got a video of, you can check that out just up here, and you move things around, It'll make this nice kind of blurred effect, which I absolutely love. So that is one way of implementing it. The other way is probably what you're thinking now. You're like, oh, Andy, why are you not using the filter on the actual source? And I'll show you for why now. So if we right click on the actual source this time and go to filters, press the plus and go to SDF effects. You'll notice when I press outline, nothing's happened. We've not got this black border around it at all. I'm going to change it to yellow just in case you can't see. So I can't see anything just here. I change the width, put it on its maximum. Nothing's happening. The offset, nothing's happening again. I'm going to reset that to zero. The sharpness, nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. And the reason being is because the, the kind of filter doesn't understand because it's already at the edge of the um, source that you're using. Uh, when we were on the scene, because... We were putting the filter on the scene. It was looking at anything inside that scene that needed a outline around. It was using this whole canvas around the edge to see if anything in there needs an outline. Whereas this, we're putting the actual filter on the source. So this is the outline of that source. There's no outlines within that. Does that make sense? So it's, it's going to try and look for a little box in there that needs an outline. So the way that we can do that is if we press the plus sign again and go to crop slash pad, we need to do a negative crop. We need to make sure that effect gets done first. So we'll bump it up. And if I go left, top, right and bottom, this is how much you're going to get cropped. And normally you'd put a number in. You'd be like, oh, I want to crop the side off like that. But we're actually going to do a negative crop. So now you can see because we put minus 100, it could be absolutely anything it doesn't have to be a hundred i'm just doing this as an example say if you're doing a five pixel border you could just do minus five and then it will just add the border to it and as you can see there because we've kind of basically what's what's happened there is we've made the canvas size for that source bigger so now it's looked inside that and said right this needs an overlay uh, outline does that make sense it can be a little bit complicated that's why I do prefer to put the thing on side or on a scene. And then what I could do is press the plus down here and we'll call this scene two. And press the plus on sources. I could then add a scene as the source, which is my nested scene. And I can just move that around wherever I want. If I really wanted to as well, I could crop it down so it is the same size. And put it into a corner or something like that. Just like that. And then now you won't have that kind of motion blurred effect because the motion is not happening on that nested scene. See, so if I move that to here and go back to the other scene, it's disappeared. 
because we've changed the look here. Does that make sense? It can be a little bit complicated. I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth with all these kind of things um, as I'm experimenting. This is quite new to me as well. I've got a little bit more to go to, to learn how to kind of get the best look of this. But it just means if you ever need to resize anything because you want to play a square game, for instance, you don't need to make different overlays for everything because you could just have one and it'll work for the entire thing. Okay, guys, let me know what you think to this in the comments below. And also make sure you do subscribe for any future content that I do regarding OBS, Twitch, or anything like that. And just come and visit me at twitch.tv slash andylippy and ask me anything. I do OBS tutorials from time to time where I'm editing inside OBS just so I can show you guys live what I'm up to behind the scenes and you can probably learn a thing or two for yourself. Alright guys, so put your rock for the stone, like, subscribe, see you soon!